everybody, it's Mrs. Graney, and today we're going to study polynomials. And I do believe you've done a bit of this, um, probably in Algebra 1, and it probably was used also in your geometry classes. So um, let's just refresh ourselves here. So first of all, a polynomial is just the sum of monomials. Remember that a monomial may look like this, something like, you know, just one term. So a polynomial is when you have many of those, two or more, I should say, um, being added or subtracted from each other. So a binomial, bi means two, is the sum of two monomials. So something like x squared plus seven, or four x squared minus nine. That would be another example of a binomial. So a trinomial, you probably already know what that is, the sum of three monomials, okay? And with that, we would probably have something like x squared plus x minus six. That's an example of a trinomial. Okay, so when we are looking at trinomials or monomials, um, binomials, what we're going to be talking about is their degree. And when we refer to the degree, we are looking for the um, monomial that has the greatest sum of exponents. So for example, if we just look at this one right here, we would say that this is a second degree trinomial because this term has the, a sum of exponents, so it's only one of them, as two. So let's say we have something like this. When we look at this, first of all, we have to remember that we have a little one here. So these add up to three. These exponents in this monomial add up to three. Obviously, this one is just five. And these add up to 11. So we would say this is an 11 degree polynomial, which, to be honest, in this class, we will never use an 11th degree polynomial, but that is how you calculate or figure out what the degree of a polynomial is. When we write polynomials, we like to write them so that we arrange them in decreasing, usually decreasing order of exponents. Okay, sometimes we'll use increasing, but usually decreasing. So for example, if you look up here, I just kind of naturally did it. I went x squared, and then the term that had x to the first, and then the constant. Okay, so if we had something like 3 minus x minus 4x squared, we would want to usually rearrange that into decreasing or descending order. So we would probably arrange it so it would say negative 4x squared minus x plus 3. And that constant always goes to the end. All right, so what are we going to do with these polynomials? Well, we're going to multiply them. And if you know how to distribute, you definitely know how to do this example right here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do a distribution of 3x with each term inside the parentheses. And then we're going to distribute the 5 with each term inside the parentheses. And then we're going to combine like terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So. 3x times 4x squared gives us 12x. And then remember, we add the exponents because we're multiplying, so we get 12x cubed. 3x times negative 4x gives us negative 12x squared. And 3x times 2 would give us 6x. Okay, now we're going to distribute the 5 into the parentheses. And when I do this, I try to line up my terms that will be combined together. You could just continue putting your numbers out here, your terms out here. I like to line them up. So 5 times 4x is 20x. I line, or I'm sorry, 20x squared. I line that up with the other x squared term. 
And then 5 times negative 4x gives us negative 20x. And 5 times 2 gives us a positive 10. The reason why I like doing it this way instead of just expanding it out that way is that now I can kind of just say, all right, I'm going to bring down my 12x squared, x cubed. I'm going to now combine these two terms. So negative 12x squared plus 20x squared gives me 8x squared. You keep that variable. You're saying, how many x squareds do I have? Next, we're going to say, well, positive 6x minus 20x gives me negative 14x. And then I just bring down the plus 10. So I really like the way that we can kind of line these up. It's easy to figure out which terms go together, which ones we can combine because they're like terms. So let that sink in for a second and then turn to the next page. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to try numbers one and two. Now number one, you re might remember something called FOIL. Well, FOIL is just double distribution. So it's just going to be distribute the 5x, that gives you your first and your outer, and then distribute the 2, and then combine. For number 2, now it's going to be just like the problem we just did. Distribute the x, Distribute the negative 3, make sure you keep that negative with the 3 when you distribute, and then combine. So what I want you to do is stop this video, do the work, and then start the video up, and let's see if we agree with our answers. Alrighty, let's take a look. So here's my distribution from the first. Here's my distribution from the second term in that first monomial. And then we combine our like terms. So negative 20x plus 6x gave us negative 14x. The second one, we distributed the x. So that's what I have here in green. We distributed negative 3. So that's what I have here. And then we added our like terms and combined them. So hopefully you did okay with that. If you made mistakes, just fix them. Make sure you understand where you went wrong. And now let's go do some geometry. We love our geometry, right? So this is going to use our formulas from geometry as well as what we just learned. So first of all, we have to know that the area of a square, you might be thinking base times height, but I really like to think of it as side squared. Because if this is 3x squared plus 7, this is also 3x squared plus 7. So we can write it pretty efficiently like this. 3x squared plus 7 squared. Now, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to think about this as a monomial where we just apply this 2 inside. Nope. Definitely not. That rule does not apply here because we have a binomial times itself. So what that means is we're going to multiply 3x squared plus 7 with 3x squared plus 7. And maybe now you see, oh yeah, it's really a FOIL problem. So let's go ahead and do this. So area equals 3x squared times 3x squared gives us 9x to the fourth. 3x squared times 7 gives us 21x squared. Now we're going to distribute this 7. So 7 times 3x squared is another 21x squared. And 7 times 7 is 49. We're going to go ahead and combine what we can. So 9x to the 4th cannot be combined with any other terms. The two 21x squareds become 42x squared. And that 49 is just our constant. And if I wanted to get really technical here, I'd say units squared. And that's our answer.
Number four is a triangle, okay, and it's supposed to be a right angle there. We remember that the formula for area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So we want to write that in. And now let's go ahead and we remember that base and height must be perpendicular to each other. So we will have 4x plus 9 times 5x squared plus 7 all divided by 2. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to FOIL that numerator. And we'll just keep it over 2. So let's start with the 4x times 5x squared. We should get 20x cubed. 4x times 7 just gives us 28x. 9 times 5x squared gives us 45x squared. And 9 times 7 gives us 63. And this is all being divided by 2. Now, I don't really think it's necessary to go ahead and divide each term by 2. I mean, you could do that, but it's really not necessary. The one thing I would say, though, is that we should arrange the values in the numerator by descending order. So I'm first going to put this term that has x cubed, so we're going to keep that where it is, so 20x cubed. Next, we're going to want to put 45x squared. That's our quadratic. Then we put our linear term, in other words, the x to the first power, so plus 28x. And then our constant, which is 63, all divided by 2. And again, technically it should be unit squared, but it's fine to leave it just as it is. Okay? And I do just want to point out, if you really don't like how this looks, you could divide everything by 2. So you would get 10x cubed plus 22.5x squared plus 14x plus 31.5. Okay? Um, I don't really care. Either answer is fine. All right, numbers 5 and 6. So we already talked about area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So we're going to write area equals pi times 5x plus 6 all squared. And again, you may want to, instead of writing that squared, you might want to just write it as 5x plus 6 times 5x plus 6 to remind yourself that you have to FOIL this. Now, don't touch that pi symbol. We're going to kick that to the end when we're done with this. So right now we'll do 5x times 5x gives us 25x squared. 5x times 6 gives us 30x. 6 by 5x gives us another 30x. And 6 by 6 gives us 36. Now let's close these parentheses and attach the pi at the end. It's not important to me that you distribute this in. You can just leave it out there. I certainly don't want to use 3.14 and multiply it in because that's an approximation. And we have an exact value here, so let's keep our answer as an exact value. So we will have 25x squared. We should combine these two to give us 60x plus 36 pi. And again, unit squared, but it's fine just like that. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem. Again, there should have been a little right angle here. This is a trapezoid. I wonder how many of you actually remember the formula for area of a trapezoid. Area equals the height times the two bases being added together, and we divide that all by 2. Now, a lot of formulas will put the 1 half in front, but I just always prefer dividing by 2 instead of multiplying by 1 half. They're actually the same thing. 
what I want you to remember is that these two parallel sides are the bases. And the height has to be perpendicular to that. So what we have is the height, which is 3x plus 5, times the sum of the two bases. Well, I'm just going to add them together. So 9x plus 12x is 21x. 12 plus 35 is 47. And again, we're just going to divide this by 2. We're just going to keep it like that. So let's go ahead and do our foiling. First, we will distribute our 3x. So we get 3 times 3x times 21x, 63x squared, 3x times 47 is 141x. Now we're going to multiply, or I'm sorry, distribute the 5. So 5 times 21x is 105x. And 5 times 47, I'm going to grab my calculator for that one, is 235. And that's all going to be divided by 2. And the only thing you have to do at this point is combine your like terms. So you get 63x squared plus 146x plus 235 all divided by 2. And that's your final answer. So you are all set. Have a great day, everybody.